Hello again. Well, I'm back on my layout. Um, now I'm onto the point where I want to start to use what I've done now to update my own layout. Uh, and my own layout doesn't have those nice, clever infrared sensor units I showed you previously with the little green LEDs. Uh, mine was done, I'm trying to guess, four, maybe five years ago now. And I've used just a sort of quite straightforward version of that. Um, see those little, that little black oblong in the track. Well, that's basically one of these. And it's an infrared uh, LED emitter and an infrared detector built in a little plastic case. It's basically the same as those two things, which is uh, an infrared uh, infrared sensor and an infrared LED in one little unit. So it's, it's a bit smaller, so I could fit it in between the, the ballast on the track. So what I'm going to do in this video is, is really of only interest to, to people who have previously used these sort of detectors in the track, mostly because I don't really want to try and rip out the detectors I have because they're quite difficult to get to in some areas of the track um, and I want to try and reuse them. So I want to go back up into my little workshop now with an idea of, of how to reuse these existing fittings in my layout with my new Arduino signal controller. Right, on, uh, first first thoughts are that we should be okay with this. It's relatively similar. This is the uh, circuit diagram produced by Everard Junction for his automatic signal control using this, this pickaxe um, microprocessor. Um, so we have a five volt supply. It goes through a resistor into the infrared sensor and a 220 ohm resistor into the infrared LED, which you may recognize that because it's exactly the same as what we've done for our signal lights. So the infrared LED is no more complicated than an LED. It has 220 ohm resistor, a five volt supply going into it and then to ground. The detector is slightly more complicated and we have a, a leg off here after the resistor, which goes to the, the pickaxe controller which obviously is where it detects whether the train has gone past or not. Um, so what we need to do, we need a slight variant on that, uh, which is pretty much the same sort of thing, really. So this is what we need on our Arduino. We have uh, a 5 volt supply from the Arduino, goes through a resistor to the light emitting diode infrared emitter, and back to ground again. So this is exactly the same as what we had before. As far as the, um, the detection is concerned, again, we've got a resistor, which we're going to use a 4.7K ohm resistor as well. I'll bring that on there. 4.7K ohm. Um, then we're going to have a, a leg off that, which goes to one of the analog pins on the Arduino, and then into the infrared sensor and back to ground. Important to note that in this design, the infrared sensor, the, the, the anode, the plus, goes to ground. So it's, it looks like it's the wrong way around, but it isn't actually. So we've got two, two, two outputs from the sensor and the emitter going to ground, so they can be common. We've got a single 5 volt supply, and we're using that one pin to uh, sense whether a train has been detected or not, which all looks very good, with one small uh, exception there, and that is... An analog pin. I haven't mentioned those previously. An analog pin is the same as a digital pin, but analog allows a, 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 a variety of readings, if you like, from from naught to two five five. There's a, a sequence where the pin can give you a, a where you are on that scale, whereas a digital pin is, is purely on or off. So we've got a bit of work to do because we we practically used all the pins up on the. Uh, on the Arduino for our, our previous project. And I mentioned that there are digital pins and there are analog pins. Uh, and we were using the analog analog pins purely as a digital input output to work the lights on our signals. So we've now got to do a little bit of, of juggling around and we need uh, these analog pins for the detection. And if you remember rightly that there are uh, three detectors on, on our, our, nice, our nice flash version. Uh, so we need three detectors on our, our more basic version. So we need three analog pins. So that shouldn't be too much. We've just got to juggle, juggle where the, the pins are around. 
um, and also redo our little sheet because we've now these analog pins now need to be used for the detection so there we go that's not so not so bad what i'm going to do now is i am going to uh, plug in some wires into my uno and do a very simple um sketch a simple program to prove that this thing works and that when a train goes over the sensor it is detected uh, and all is good so let's put that together now okay that's been done uh, it looks a bit complicated but it isn't really this is it's this this diagram here in real life so to speak um, we've got one analog pin being used as our uh, um, detection there is my combined infrared emitter and infrared sensor um, and a re one resistor 220 ohm for the emitter and the 4.7k for the uh, the receiver so that's it all i need to do now is plug this in um, I've, i'm going to write the program so that we've got a screenshot of what reading is coming back but also i've done it so that this led here uh, will light up when the detector detects the train for of a better word so if it's working properly when i wave some silver paper over this this uh, detector that led light should come on hopefully right let's give it a go right it's all up and running now um one thing i didn't get right last time i mentioned about what the analog read gives in the way of a reading um is between zero and one oh two three i think so you can imagine this, this is a huge huge if, if that's zero there and that's one oh two three there the analog read will give us any reading in between depending on what the reading is telling it so it's a huge variance so this is now running. So if I now look at my screen, you can see what the actual number is coming out as, which is good because we can tell that that's, that's at the top end of the range. So it's almost like a switch where it's on or off, not being on 1023 being off. So that's good news because it, it we're, we're right right at one end of the of the value, as it were. And what will happen is when a train is detected, that value will change. Well, we hope it will change anyway. And um, all we do here, this is what my little program does, is it says, um, find out what that reading is, read the analog pin, print that to the screen, which is what is happening here. Um, and if we've, we've given it a level, we've said if that falls below 900, in other words, something is reflecting the infrared light back, then we assume that a train has been detected and turn on the LED just to show that. So just in terms of the readings coming through here i've now got my little bit of silver paper and if i wave that over the detector on the, the board that number should start to decrease which is great look at that perfect so that number is going down to well any range sort of 800 700s so that's great so our below 900 gives us enough leeway to not get any false readings now potentially we may have to change that depending on your circumstances, but that 900 seems to work perfectly for us. So in other words, it's over 900 there, no detection. I put some silver paper in front of the detector and it's gone down. In fact, if I put the silver paper right close to it, it does go down to practically zero, which is fantastic. So I'm showing that in real life here. Put my silver paper over the detector and the, the light comes on. So we know that's working. That's the whole point of that exercise is just to show that my little um, emitter and detector is perfectly working with my Arduino. Magic. Okay, that's that. Fantastic. Right, so I've just taken out my little module thing with a little plastic surround and replaced it with just two separate um, detectors and emitters. So you may have had that because that's what the original um, Everard Junction design included so just to prove that that's exactly the same as, as this thing here and there you go blue light comes on because it's detected so that's exactly the same so that's good it's all working now that's uh, that's great right so we now move on uh, i mentioned the need to change some of these pins around because when we did the very first program i uh, just allocated pins from lowest number to highest number and just carried on um, with the subsequent now subsequently now require some analog pins I need to change these around because I've 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 used all my analog pins on signal three 
as it turns out quite handily one of those pins is for the detector so i don't need to change that but i do need to change these two because they need to be analog pins so what i've done is i've remapped a few of the pins in the software uh, so that was the old version and this is a new version um, and i've put up here pin diagram for analog input and i will provide a link in the comment section so that you can download this this sheet uh, and if you look if you notice pin a compared to the old one pin a0 stays the same but i've had to swap around a1 and pin 8 and a2 and pin 2. so in our new version the analog detector all has an analog, analog pin and the, and the consequence of that i've just had to change a few pin rounds so i've done all that i've, I've, I've made those changes in the software and if you see here it says train detection pin number one is now a2 because i've changed it to an analog pin and, and what you'll notice is the difference here where it says this version is the sketch this version of the sketch is for use with the analog infrared sensor only. So I, I try to avoid different versions of the same thing, but I'll let, this is unavoidable. So just make sure if you if you are using this method of detection using the small sensors and emitters, this is the version you need. I've also you'll also notice that there's an additional definition here in the user set values. And that is to decide, uh, define the infrared sensor value. Do you remember I mentioned about 900 seemed to be the good level to trigger it? So if you think that at 900 doesn't work on your system, it needs to be higher or lower. All you need to do is change that 900 to 800 or 1000, whatever. But 900 seems to work for me, so that's good. Um, that's the only thing that you need to change. In theory, I've changed everything else. And I've changed the detection from digital to analog. And I've changed all the pins. So everything should be working as it was before, but with the new detectors. Fingers crossed. Let's give it a go. Uh, okay, right. Well, I'm, I'm conscious of time moving on. I don't want to make this video too long. and I really want to keep it as a single video part because trying to spread it over several sections is going to make life very complicated when it comes to deciding whether or not we want analog or digital. So here we go. I have plugged everything in just for one signal. Um, just followed my little crib sheet here as I would normally do. So this top line here, A2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Um, I've, I've refigured my um, test run as a, and I've just soldered it all together so it's more convenient. So we've got the analog pin, uh, 5 volt pin and ground pin and the resistors are, are within the, this shrouding here. So everything goes to plan i'm just going to wave some silver paper over the detector and that should start the sequence of lights as we've seen previously there we go red amber double amber back to green good that works okay uh i'm not going to show you the signals two and three doing the same thing uh, because i don't really want to drag on any longer than i have to so as far as i'm concerned now that project is a goer for me um, i'm going to start changing over my troublesome signals with an arduino um, and hopefully it's going to be pretty straightforward to do if you have interest in this video presumably that means you've done the same as me in that you've installed the everard junction format so you must have a bit of technical knowledge on how to do that because it's quite involved so if you are going to change them over and keep your um your sensors as they are then this should be a solution uh, and good luck. Thanks everyone, bye.